working with seniors, um, there's an amazing opportunity here to do a couple things. One, land listings, right? That's the topic that we're talking about. But two, to help. Um, seniors in general, right? There's um, people Jason's age, they're all, you know, looking for homes and stuff like that right now. Like this is that time. Um, and they need help. A lot of people have not wisely invested. Um, there's studies that talk about the, you know, what percentage of people actually saved up enough money to have a happy retirement and, and all that. And it's, it's very, very small. There are very, very few people who are, you know, hitting their golden years and in retirement. And now it's time they need to, you know, whether it's moving to independent living or assisted living or memory care, whatever the case may be, like, they're not financially prepared for it. They don't have the money in the bank. They don't have the um, investments. They don't have the assets. They don't have all of that stuff in place. Very, very few people have truly planned out their life to be prepared for this phase. And sometimes it hits sooner rather than later, um, right? We never know when this stuff is gonna hit us. Like my mom passed away in her fifties. Like that, that happens, right? That wasn't in a perfect world. You live till you're 80, 90, 100 years old, but you, you just don't know when this stuff's going to come. Um, and so a lot of people are just not prepared for it, right? When it comes at 50 versus 80, how many people are really prepared to go to memory care and have to spend $10,000 a month? Like there's very, very few people who are prepared for that. But what a lot of um, these people do have is they have a home that they own. And a lot of times it's a home that they've owned for a very long time. And as a result, they have a lot of equity. They got a lot of money um, in their property. And so the way, you know, what typically happens is one of two things in these scenarios is if they don't have any money, a family member has to step up and fit the bill. Um, or the other thing that happens is that they have a house that they have hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of equity and they sell the house. And that's how they cover the cost of, um, you know, living the best life that they can. And so as seniors, you know, run into this scenario, there's a lot of seniors that need help. Um, and there's a lot of predatory people out there. I mean, you hear about stuff all the time about seniors taken, being taken advantage of. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity for us to go out there and to help seniors and to be there for them and to help make this um, a transition that's easy for them, or at least as easy as it could possibly be, right? I mean, when somebody, you know, gets hit with dementia or something like that, I mean, there's nothing easy about it it's crazy stressful. I know my sister just went through it. Like it's, it's insane. It's really, really tough on everybody. If we can make helping them get the cash that they need to provide the best care that they can for their family members, like that's a pretty rewarding feeling when we can do that and when we can help out. So I would encourage you guys to start thinking about some of the opportunities of helping seniors. Um, one of the things that you guys can do, I don't think Steve, I don't see him on here. Uh, Steve got his SRES designation, which stands for Senior Real Estate Specialist. Um, that's something if you guys, like if this is something you have a passion for and you really want to help seniors, I would encourage you guys to take the classes required to get your SRES designation. Um, not because of the designation so much, but what you'll learn. Because let's face it, like the majority of us on here are in our 20s and 30s. And you know, unless we have a parent who's been through this stuff, like we don't really know like what it's like. It's, it's kind of hard for us to understand this stuff. So taking that class just so that you can learn, you know, what it is that seniors are going through and, and how we can help them, I would really encourage you guys to do that. So what I want to do is just share a couple strategies um, of ways that you guys can help with seniors. Um, number one is we talked to essentially everything that we talked about with new home builders you can do that exact same thing when it comes to seniors. You can do the exact same thing. You go, you build the relationship with the senior community. So initially, you just simply go into the se local senior community. Sorry guys, Lantern Crest is mine. Um, you go into the local senior community and just come from curiosity. Just come in there and say, hey, you know, I work with a lot of clients here in whatever area, right? Let's say you go, Keith, you go somewhere up in Carlsbad, like I work with a lot of clients here in Carlsbad and a lot of my clients are, you know, looking for independent or assisted living, whatever the case may be. I'd love to just learn a little bit more about your, your community. Um, so it could be something I can, you know, um, encourage people to come check you guys out. Take a tour. They would love to give you a tour and tell you all about their community. 
And your first visit is just that, just go tour the community, get to know it, um, build a relationship with them. And that's it. Don't, don't ask for anything. Don't look for anything in return. Just go in there and just come from curiosity because in real reality, that's a fact. It's like, we're all going to have clients that are aging up and looking for a place to go. It would be valuable if you knew what were the local options for seniors to go to. So truly come from curiosity, get all their marketing materials, find out, you know, are they expanding? Do they have anything new coming? What makes them unique? Blah, 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 right? Do all that stuff. If you're running a community page like we do with everything East County or Clayton with OVTV, right? If you guys are running pages like that, maybe you could feature them, right? Do a little video on them and spotlight them because now you're adding value and you're giving them exposure. Um, I actually took a three plus million dollar listing from Lantern Crest because I shot a video on it. Like it's the biggest listing on the residential side that I've ever done it was purely because we shot a video at the local senior community and just spotlighted who they are. And whether you do that, if you have a show or you don't, just do it on your, just do a Facebook Live, right? And, and just talk about it. Um, but do something just to help those guys out, give them exposure. Um, and then at some point you're gonna go in there and, and now start asking some questions. And now you wanna go in there and find out like, you know, hey, just out of curiosity, which is a fantastic opener, um, yeah, out of curiosity, how many, you know, how many units do you guys have? we have 200. Oh, okay. That's awesome. You know, in a, a typical month, how many units become available? Now you got to be careful with your wording and stuff, right? But um, like it or not, there's natural turnover that happens in senior communities. Um, it's just, it is what it is, right? Um, but you'll find that there's a percentage of units that turn over every single month, depending on the community. Um, most of the time they're going to turn over somewhere around 5% of their units on a monthly basis. So if they have a hundred units, there's going to be like five of those things that are going to churn. Some of those are people, you know, going home for hospice or going somewhere else. Maybe they were in an area that's assisted living and now they need memory care. So they have to go somewhere else, whatever the case may be, but there's going to be some natural turnover that happens much more turnover than regular housing. You're talking maybe 5% in a month as opposed to 5% in a year in a normal community. So there's a lot of turnover. Um, so what that means is that these communities constantly have vacancies. Well, when they have vacancies, that means there's going to be new people that are coming in. Well, we just talked about that when people need to come into these communities, a lot of times they don't have the funds that are necessary to afford this type of care. The only way they have the funds is to sell their house. So you got to imagine the leasing agents when somebody comes in and is touring facilities, and then they get hit with the bomb, like, oh, by the way, it's $10,000 a month for your mom or dad to live here. They're like, holy shit, we're going to have to sell mom's house if she's going to be able to afford this. Well, guess what? If you have the relationship with that leasing agent, who is that leasing agent going to think of when somebody says, oh, well, we'd love to move here, but we're going to need to sell mom's house if we're going to do it. Wouldn't it be nice if you're that person that they're referring, right? So it's all a relationship thing. It's just like the new home builders, you've got to work it. So with new homes, traditionally, you're working with a sales rep at new homes and you may have to escalate it up the ladder, um, just depending on how big the company is, you might have to go to corporate or something. Um, same thing with these new home communities. Some of these are huge nationwide companies that have hundreds of buildings across the country and they have some like set systems. And some of them are very small. They're, they're single location and they don't have any of that system in place. And so they just allow their leasing agents to refer whoever they're comfortable with. Well, again, the leasing agents, these guys are getting paid based on filling units. So if you can be that person that when somebody comes in and says, Hey, my mom wants to move here, but we got to sell mom's house before we can afford it. You want to be the person they think of because they know you're going to get the job done. Because if you go get the job done, now they can fill their vacancy. They make their bonus or they get their commission. However, they're paid they're happy. And the more that you follow through for them, the more they're going to follow through on sending referrals your direction. So that's one opportunity. And that's, again, it's a relationship thing. So you're not just going to go in there one time and become their person. This is a relationship you got to work. So come in from curiosity, maybe you offer to shoot a video about them. Um, and then just come in, you know, and check in on a regular basis, find out what's new. If they've got events going on, you could help promote them on social media. Um, just be there, be that resource for them and amazing things will happen for you.